On this week's boiler tip, we're going to talk about trap selection. Not types of traps, in this case we're talking about an inverted bucket trap, but sizing a trap. Um, this particular trap, if I was going to replace it, I could easily say, oh, it's a half inch trap. I've got one in the parts crib. But the piping connection on a trap is not the limiting factor for capacity. Actually, it's the internal orifices. So if I look at two inverted bucket traps, one of these has an internal orifice that's an eighth inch. One is a quarter inch. Well, obviously we get more capacity the larger the orifice we have. But what we have to worry about is the pressure we're operating at and the force that's actually going to apply. Because the larger the seat, the more force when the trap is closed holding it shut. And that actually limits the functional range of a trap. So when we look at a trap, it may have a maximum working pressure, but it, the most important number is actually the PMO, or the operating pressure. And that doesn't show a triangle there, but it's actually a differential, because we're gonna have pressure perhaps on both sides of that orifice, and we wanna look at this. But for our purposes, we're gonna assume the downstream pressure is zero. If we look at our trap with a quarter inch orifice in it, and we take that diameter, cut it in half to get the radius, run it through our pi times radius square equation, that gives us the surface area of that opening. And so in an application where I grab that trap, it's got a proof pressure of 250 PSI, um, I put it on a 100 PSI application, because that quarter inch orifice has the area it has, and we've got the 100 PSI of pressure, that gives us a total force holding this trap shut of five pounds. So if I've got a little bucket, I have only the weight and a small amount of leverage to counteract that five PSI. So if I put this quarter inch trap on a high pressure application, um, it's gonna close once and until pressure is relieved from it, it's just never gonna open again. So a trap that you install may appear to fail closed right out of the gate. It may mean it's got the wrong PMO. So this is a 30 and 50 PMO trap. Those are my examples. And we can look that same trap on a 30 PSI application is only going to have 1.5 pounds of closing force. So this bucket and the internal leverage is going to be able to counteract that. Um, on a high pressure application, we've got to put a smaller orifice in there because we do our math and at 50 PSI, we've only got just over half a pound of, for, of closing force on it. And actually, I see eighth inch orifices all the time on 100 PSI applications and it works fine. Um, so why don't we just use the smaller orifice on everything? Because we're gonna lose capacity. So on a low pressure application, we have to have a larger orifice so we can remove the condensate promptly. But on a higher pressure application, we can remove the same amount of condensate because we've got more differential. But having the right internal orifice is gonna allow the trap to work correctly.